So today's, of course, main story is about the mysterious respiratory illness in dogs. Um, it's kind of creating panic just across um, the country. So can you just kind of shortly in a summary explain what this respiratory illness is for those who aren't exactly aware of it? Yeah, so this uh, mysterious canine respiratory illness is, well, the, it's actually been around for a little bit longer than most people think. We've been tracking it uh, out of New Hampshire, the University of New Hampshire, for about a year now. Uh, so we originally thought it was a virus. It now appears to be a bacteria that we previously did not know of, but it presents very much like kennel cough. So your dog is going to be lethargic, maybe a loss of appetite, and then a cough is going to start. But different from a kennel cough, this cough is wet. And then if that isn't addressed properly, it can lead into pneumonia, which leads into stays at the ICU vet, the ER vet, that can be very, very expensive. And sadly, a few dogs have lost their lives. So it's, it seems to be, at this point, antibiotic resistant. Um, but I think that's just because we're so unfamiliar with it. So more cultures are being done right now at the University of New Hampshire. So hopefully we'll know more in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. And you said um, this kind of originated there. Um, what other states have kind of been seeing this um, respiratory illness and has our area, Central Texas, have we have any confirmed cases? So as of right now, I am not aware of any confirmed cases in Texas or even just central Texas. Uh, we do have confirmed cases all along the western seaboard, so Oregon, Washington, down into California. A um, couple trickled through the middle of the United States and then uh, the northeast, it seems to be the word, which of course, New Hampshire, which is where it actually originated. A lot of people are speculating that it originated in like the Oregon area, but I think that's because of where the media started popping up <laughs> this year. Yeah, and I mean, it's blown up over social media just over the past week or so. Um, so people are kind of panicking. Um, do you have any I guess, general tips for those who are freaking out, calling their veterinarians, because I talked to a bunch of different um, clinics today and they were like, they weren't, weren't able to meet with me, but they were like, yeah, we've had dozens of calls just with people freaking out because again, like you said, there's not a lot of research about it. There isn't a lot of research. Well, there's a lot of research going on. We just don't have a lot of answers yet. And so there are a lot of things we can do preventatively of course first and foremost and what everybody is talking about and, and this is important is that if we can avoid dog parks we can avoid uh, boarding your animal places where there are large groups of dogs gathered because while yes we do now believe that it is bacterial it has some have decided that it is going to attack the lungs and it has become aerosol aerosolized, if I can say that word. And because of that, it is transmitted very easily between dogs. And uh, we don't currently believe that it can be spread outside of the canine species. So I wouldn't worry too much about that right now. I know that is something people are always concerned with, but don't let your dog drink out of communal water bowls. Um, avoid, you know, large groupings of dogs. Just as importantly, and what most people are not talking about is we really want to be proactive in taking care of our dog's gut health, because especially because this is bacterial. We know, and it has been theorized, that it originated from a dysbiotic gut. So gut health is really, really important, not just for the overall health of your dog, but because 70% of the immune system lives in the gut. And that's true for us and our dogs. So the foundation of health is what we're feeding our dogs. So we need to be really concerned with feeding as much fresh food as possible. Of course, responsibly, we want to make sure that the dogs are getting all of the nutrients that they need to be getting in their food. Uh, so responsibly, but fresh food is really what we need to be concerned with. We can, after we do that, onboard uh, really high quality probiotics. Um, as a nutritionist, of course, I like to look at food first. So there are wonderful probiotics and lots of foods uh, that we can look at. But of course, you can also buy supplements for this. And then 
we can of course keep supplementing outside of that we can do vitamin c or ascorbic acid it's really easy to attain at a local drugstore and it's water soluble so you can start low and titrate up um, of course always check with your veterinarian and if your dog does uh, if they're just acting a little off and you think they're being lethargic, they're refusing their food, yes, please do call your veterinarian. And there might be a way to get in, but you know, try your best because this is something that if we can get on top of it early, we have a better chance. And again, as you were saying, being proactive and setting up our dog's body to be able to do what it does best, and that is to kill off any potential pathogenic invaders in the body. So what we really should be focusing on right now is our dog's body and their gut health. Perfect. That's great information. A lot of articles that I've been reading don't even mention that. So I think that's something that can really help people. Um, and like you said, take, they can take those precautions early on instead of, you know, waiting last minute. Another thing that you mentioned, um, just dogs being around other dogs. Um, what if, People are traveling for the holidays um, and they have no option and they have to board their pets. Um, do you have tips for them? Like, should their pets be vaccinated? What are some things that like you think they should do if they don't really have an option? So if you are traveling for the holidays and you have scheduled your dog to be boarded, there are a couple of things. One, and I hate to say this, but consider changing your plans. Consider uh, looking at alternative methods for having your dog taken care of. There are some wonderful pet sitters that either will bring your dog into their their home or come to your home to take care of your pet. So do you don't really have to do a ton of research uh, to find an accredited certified pet sitter, a professional pet sitter um, in your area to better be able to handle to take care of your dog if you do have no other option you, you can't cancel your plans it's non-refundable um, and you're gonna board your dog you know because this is a bacteria i don't see where any vaccinations are going to be necessarily beneficial but you can talk to the kennel where you're boarding their dog and make sure they are taking all of the necessary precautions to keep things clean, to keep dogs separated, that they are aware of the signs to look for so that they can isolate dogs if they do start exhibiting symptoms of lethargy, um, non-appetite, things like that. So just talk to them. And again, be very proactive. If we can get our dogs on a, a, you know, a balanced fresh food diet, if we can onboard probiotics now and ahead of time, their bodies are going to be in much better shape to be able to handle anything that comes their way. And I think you were saying too, I don't know if I read this or if you mentioned it earlier, but this um, illness can be deadly, right? Um, I don't know if there have been confirmed cases of that, but this is something that people should take seriously. This is something that people should take seriously. And sadly, there are a, a handful of canine deaths that have been associated with this bug. Um, it isn't something that I think people should be super panicked about. I don't want people to, you know, just isolate their dogs and not do anything, not go anywhere. In fact, I think it is really important that we still take our dogs for a walk. We still let them get fresh air, let their feet touch the ground, touch the soil. That is going to still be really, really important, again, to maintain their uh, innate immune system and keep them on a schedule. We don't want them to get depressed. You know, that happens in the winter. A lot of times we kind of hole up in our houses um, and that is I don't want people to freak out so much that they are doing harm by not even going outside. Like outside is good. <laughs> yes. I think people get scared, you know, like, and they see like one thing in the media and then it's like, okay, like we're not gonna, we're going to, going to completely isolate them. But like you said, people need to keep in mind other dogs in the area, but that doesn't mean don't go outside, don't let them enjoy that fresh air, things like that, right? Absolutely. And if you are in a really urban area or maybe you live in an apartment complex and it's difficult to avoid other dogs, consider getting up a little bit earlier to walk your dog or waiting a little bit later so there aren't as many dogs out when you do take your dog out. And then um, you talked about this earlier too, the kennel cough. So you said um, 
that with this respiratory illness, it's a more wet cough, correct? Correct. Okay. So kennel cough, and there is a there is a vaccine for kennel cough. That generally, if you're boarding your dog, they're going to require that you have that. Um, but it, kennel cough is a very dry cough, and with this particular bacteria, it is more of a wet cough. So you're going to hear that like wetness as they're <laughs> as they're coughing. Are there any other common symptoms, anything um, that people should be really looking out for with their pets? So I think the most common symptoms are what we talked about, the lethargy, um, not wanting to eat, and then the cough. And then, of course, as it progresses into a pneumonia, you're going to have the like breathing difficulties. And again, no confirmed cases in Central Texas no or none. Yeah, not that I'm aware of. There aren't any confirmed cases in Central Texas right now. Do you think that um, maybe in the future this is something that our state could be seeing? I don't know if it's like has increased at all or if it's kind of um, just been kind of stagnant. Um, I don't know what those numbers have been looking like. <clears throat> well, because it's actually been around for about a year, the spread is a bit slower than what a lot of the media is representing. Um, but certainly if you look at a map and you see it on the West Coast and you see it in the Northeast and a couple of little um, cases here and there in the middle of the United States, you know, this is aerosolized. So it's got to be getting there. So, yeah, it's we're I'm sure we're going to see it in Texas, especially as it gets colder um, and people are in their houses more. We have, you know, the, the heat on in the house that's not letting outside air into the home. You know, it's just a season where we generally do get sick easier. Uh, but it, 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 we're very likely to see it. I just don't think it is spreading as quickly as as a lot of people are suggesting. Got it. Is there anything else that you would like to add? Um, any final thoughts, anything you feel like you didn't get to mention that you wanted to add on? Um, no, you know, I think we covered everything, you know, um, most importantly is being proactive in your dog's gut health and their immune health, uh, because our, our bodies, our dog's bodies are very well equipped when given the right fuel, when given the right energy to, to handle invaders in the body. And so if we can set them up to be able to do that better, um, we're going to see better prognosis, better outcomes. Yeah. And, you know, pets are like your family members, you know, so people really need to, you know, remember that they're, they're important too. You know, sometimes I feel like people go to work and they're just like, oh, I let them out for the day, feed them, but they're just as important, you know, as us. They are. And, you know, it's, it, as we become healthier, we realize how important food and exercise is in our lives you know a, a lot of times we look over at our pets and we have this aha moment that oh my gosh they need good food and exercise too and the sooner we have those realizations and the sooner we uh, do something about it the healthier they can be uh, the more quality of life they're going to have the longer life they're going to have and you know it, it, we don't eat highly processed fast food day in and day out every day for our whole lives. So when we start to learn that our pets shouldn't either, um, we can make some really drastic, drastic improvements in our dog's quality of life. Yeah. What have you seen too personally? I mean, as someone who has been, how long have you been doing this for? <laughs> um, well, I've actually been in the, we call it the healthy pet space <laughs> for <laughs> probably six years now. I was a positive reinforcement dog trainer. And when I started feeding my own dogs fresh foods and the crazy changes I saw in, in their lives, I started implementing that with my dog training clients and put myself out of a job as a dog trainer, which I was thrilled to do because there's such a huge connection between food and behavior. Um, is as much so as there is between food and gut health and immune health. So I've just become really, really passionate about it. And I'm thrilled to be able to, to talk to people about it.
Yeah, that's awesome because again, like my family, they have dogs um, and I love dogs so much, but like you don't sometimes think about like the foods they eat. That's so important and how they act. And if something's off, like maybe that's something you should pay attention to and keep in mind. So I'm definitely going to be telling my parents about (laughs) all of this. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Uh, You know, it's, there is information out there and I'm happy to help as many people as I can. I'm only one person, but um you know, having a certification in canine nutrition has changed the way I see a lot of things for sure. Yeah. And I bet it's cool too, to see like that difference, like you said, to see just how it's transformed them. So um, I'm sure when people come to you and they're seeing it with their own pets, that's special for them. Yeah, absolutely. And not just the transformation in the dogs, but how pet parents are just amazed and they are so happy they're so pleased like the the quality of life because you every moment you spend in your home you're spending it with your pets and if that is no longer frustrating and that's a really calm and enjoyable experience i mean that that literally can change your whole life yeah exactly (laughs) well thank you so much again jessica i really appreciate it if we have um any other stories like this um i'll definitely keep your contact because you answered my questions perfectly and um it was very insightful so i appreciate it thank you sydney it was so nice to meet you you too you have a great rest of your day